Good evening. I am Ellen Kern, Chair of Lehigh Carbon Community College Foundation Board of Directors. You are in for a wonderful treat this evening. Before we begin our event, it is my great pleasure to introduce Lehigh Carbon Community College President, Dr. Ann Bieber. Good evening, I am Dr. Ann Bieber, President of Lehigh Carbon Community College. I am honored to join you virtually in your homes for this LTRIC Foundation Dinner Party being held all across our community tonight. Over the past nine months, we have faced significant challenges. Last March, all of our classes pivoted quickly to an online or remote format, a testament to the commitment of our faculty and dedication of our students to continue their education. Funds we raised through this virtual dinner party will go to ease the financial strain on our students and help them to stay in school. This unique community event is a creative response to pandemic restrictions, but also creates a sense of community encouraging you to cook along in your own kitchens together with others across the valley and beyond. I know you join me in our anticipation of the delectable treats that are in store and the meal that Chef Mark from Curious Goods at the Bake Oven Inn has prepared for us. We are also happy to spotlight students from our culinary program who have prepared the delicious desserts to end the meal. Joining us as our MC this evening is LTRIC's 2016 graduate Joe Sibilia who is now the executive producer of the Joe Piscopo radio show out of New York City. It has been a pleasure to watch the rise of one of our former students. With Joe's high energy and sense of humor, the evening will be a lot of fun. And now to all of you chefs out there, bon appetit. Thank you, Dr. Bieber, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Joe Sibilia. Coming to you from my secret bunker, can't tell you where that is, may or may not be my parents' basement, but regardless of where it is, I'm glad I can be with you tonight. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself before we get going here. It might be easier just to tell you who I'm not. I'm not Conan O'Brien, I'm not Ed Sheeran, I'm not the kid from Harry Potter, I'm not Opie from the Andy Griffith Show, I'm not Anne Margaret, I'm not any of these famous redheads, I'm Joe Sibilia. I am uh, now the executive producer of the Joe Piscopo Show on AM970 The Answer in New York City, but I uh, am a LTRIC graduate from 2016, and I graduated with a degree in communication, and I worked with the radio station, WXLV, and I did a radio show there where I got to interview all the biggies from Buzz Aldrin and Tony Orlando. I know, I know. Have you fallen out of your seat yet? And not only that, I've also uh, been a member of the Honor Scholars Program at LTRIC, so uh, LTRIC has done a lot for me, and uh, clearly I've done a lot for LTRIC. No, but I'm so glad to be a part of this uh, event tonight, and I thank you for joining us. I'd now like to take the opportunity to introduce Mr. Jerry Frank. He's a senior member of King Spry's uh, Business uh, Law Practice Group, and uh, Mr. Frank has uh, done a lot for the Lehigh Valley over the years, and specifically for Lehigh Carbon Community College. He's been uh, associated with the college for 50 years as an adjunct, as a speaker, and uh, he's a wonderful guy. Please uh, welcome Mr. Jerry Frank. Good evening. On behalf of my law firm, King Spry, a sponsor, and myself, I want to welcome you to this evening of fun. During my tenure at the community college, I have watched the campus grow from two buildings to seven buildings and the outreach campuses in downtown Allentown, Lehigh Valley International Airport, and in Tamaqua. During this time, I have crossed paths with many people. Fifty times, the Board of Trustees has appointed me as their solicitor. I've interacted and worked with every president the college has had, all five of them. On a very personal note, I met my wife of 36 years, Sally, on the campus interacting in a campus activity. I've also gotten to watch the growth of Dr. Bieber. Dr. Bieber was a young lady 
who had a family married with her husband, Matt, was working as an office secretary and took education courses and worked her way through the system to the point where today she is now the president of Lehigh Carbon Community College. All of this tells me that education is very critical. I'm a recipient of it. Others are recipients of it. And in this particular case, 45 years ago, I had the benefit of working with the college to create this college foundation that is sponsoring this event today. They started with very little money, but today they are able to handle and offer scholarships to 900 students. We have a particularly unique problem right now, and that is caused by COVID-19. We are in a dire emergency. We now have students who are having very great financial difficulties in going to school. By your participation today and your contribution, you're going to help fund their continuing education. I deeply appreciate that, and I thank you for that. Enjoy your evening and have fun cooking that food. Thank you, Jerry, and I'd like to talk to you just for a moment about the LTRIC Foundation. Really, it is changing lives and impacting so many students daily. Uh, each year, the foundation provides 912 students with $1,087,536 in scholarships. So please, supporting the LTRIC Foundation is critical to help so many of these students because look at all the good that LTRIC has done. I've come out of LTRIC, so there you go. Uh, go to the website for the foundation and uh, find out more and find out how you can uh, support the foundation. All right. I now like to introduce two different Lehigh Carbon Community College students. Yadira Rosado, a 2020 graduate in health science, and she's currently working on her associate degree in nursing. And Joanne Christensen, who is a 2019 graduate in social work. Hi everyone, my name is Yadira Rosado. Thank you for supporting the LTRC Foundation. Through the scholarship that I received, I was able to pay for my books, tuition, and school supplies, which was great because I'm a single mom of two, so any little bit helps. I have a nursing student at LTRC as well, and I cannot wait to finish the program to become a hospice nurse for Lehigh Valley Hospital. Thank you again for all the support. I really appreciate it. Take care, bye. Hi, my name is Joanne Christensen. I'm an alumni of LTRIC. My time at LTRIC was actually fun. I met a lot of new friends and I had professors who were determined to see me succeed and make sure I was doing well. I was also opportune to have worked with the LTRIC Foundation and I've made some lifelong connections there. I have also improved greatly on my professionalism due to mentorship that I had at the foundation. Because of the work the foundation is doing, I'm able to continue my education here at Weber State University, and I'm hopeful for what the future is gonna bring. Thank you for all of your support in making this possible. Have a good evening. Truly two very inspirational stories, and it's through the donors and the campaign partners and people like you who help make these opportunities possible and we thank you so much. I'd now like to introduce Ellen Miller Kern. She is the chair of the LTRIC Foundation. In 1996, she received Lehigh Carbon Community College's Collegiate Award of Distinction, and she is also the chief of staff for Senator Pat Brown. So please welcome, with great pleasure, Ellen Miller Kern. And thank you, Joe. On behalf of all the members of the Foundation Board, welcome to this unique dinner party. We have created a fun way for all of us to be together as we support the Foundation's COVID-19 Student Emergency Fund. The proceeds from the dinner party will help students who have been impacted by the pandemic pay for tuition, books, food, childcare, rent, and more. It bridges the gap to help students continue to fulfill their dreams for a college education. 
I am proud to represent the Foundation Board this evening because the work we do really changes lives for the better. Thanks to all of you for your ongoing support of our students. We have had to be creative and this virtual dinner party captures the spirit of our L3C family. We have some exciting online auctions this evening and don't forget to place your bids. To paraphrase the late great Mayor Daly, bid early and bid often. You can also make an additional monetary donation through the same website. Now, it is my privilege to introduce our chef for the evening, Chef Mark Musinski. Mark and Catherine opened Curious Goods in the Bake Oven Inn in 2007. Curious Goods in Germansville honors and celebrates the farming tradition with an entirely farm to table menu. We are in for a real gustatory treat this evening. Thank you, Chef Mark, and welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the culinary kitchen here at El Tri C. Now that you reviewed the prep video of what was in your box, which is everything here, there's a mise en place, everything in its place. These are all the ingredients that were included in the kit. Uh, the only thing you need to have is salt, pepper, sugar, a little bit of butter, a little bit of oil to saute the chicken breast in, and a little bit of nonstick spray that'll help the chicken when you put it in the oven. So now let's start cooking. Now we have the chicken breast here. These have already been pre-stuffed by the students, the culinary students earlier today. So what we have here is a chicken breast. I'm gonna turn it skin side down. And with a sharp knife, you're just gonna make a little incision between the skin and the top. You wanna kinda of go right in the middle. Like I said, this is the hardest part of the dish you have to do. You just wanna make a nice little pocket in there. And then you're gonna get the duck cell, which is the mushroom paste from Primordia Mushroom there in Lynn Hardsville. And then you're just gonna stuff the chicken breast. We already had the chicken stuffed from the students, so this is a leftover duck cell that'll fit in there perfectly. You wanna kind of push it in there and you just wanna kind of smoosh it together. Here's the three that were done earlier. And now we're gonna do, just season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. You wanna do that on both sides. Salt and pepper. I'm gonna wipe my hands, I have a little wet towel here. And now we have a saute pan here over medium heat. You want to get it nice and hot. You want to get the pan hot first before you add the oil. Those will help it from sticking. If you have a non-stick pan, that'll be the best thing to do. It'll help the chicken from sticking. It'll be easier to clean up for you. Now we have this over a nice heat. You can feel if you put your hand over it. It's not too hot where you pull it away, but it's not where you can put it around top of the pan. So that's a good heat. 
you're gonna put a little bit of oil because you want to brown the chicken when you brown something it gives much better flavor and color so you put the oil in there you want the pan to get a little bit hot you want the oil to get hot now you want to go maybe a minute or so just get the oil hot now you're going to add your chicken breast if you don't have a pan this big you can do it in batches you can do two at a time and put it in a container and continue so now we're just going to put the chicken in as you can hear it sizzles that's what you want you want a nice sizzle from the chicken and you want to do skin side down a skin side down first and just watch it does splash a little bit don't be afraid and now you want the chicken to cook on this side the skin side down you get a nice color which will give more flavor to the dish uh, about three to four minutes and what I have here <clears throat> if you have at home like a Pyrex dish a ceramic dish you could bake in the oven we're gonna transfer the chicken to this so I'm just gonna put a little bit of nonstick spray this will help the chicken from sticking. Now we're going to take a look at the chicken. He's starting to get a little bit of color. We want to go a little bit more. So I'm going to turn the heat up just a tad. So you want to get a nice little golden brown color on on the skin side, then we're going to flip it over. And if a little bit of the mushroom comes out, don't worry about that. That's going to be part of the next dish, which is the Brussels sprouts, that we're going to do in the same pan. So this way, less cleanup for you. So now we're just going to turn the chicken. we got a nice little golden brown on here. We're going to turn it over. And then we're going to do the same process, let it golden brown on the other side. It'll take another two to three minutes. <clears throat> Alrighty, now that we have it nice and golden brown on the bottom side, we're gonna transfer it to your sprayed pan. I'm gonna leave the skin side up. This way the oven will help the skin <clears throat> get a little more browning effect. And then now we're just going to pop this in a 350 degree oven and it's going to take pro approximately 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, you want to make sure the temperature inside is about 150 degrees. I know they say 165, but 150 because I'm going to cover it and let it rest and it'll continue to cook as it's resting. And if you do not want to saute it, you can put the chicken breast straight in a sprayed pan and bake it in the oven. The cooking time will be a little bit more, probably 30 to 35 minutes. Now that you put the chicken in the oven, now with the same pan, we're gonna leave the chicken fat that came off of the skin, any little mushrooms that are in there, we're gonna make the Brussels sprouts. So now we're gonna add the bacon, and this we already rendered a little bit in the kit, and it has a little bit of the bacon fat in there. So you just wanna add that to the pan, put it back over medium heat, and you just wanna crisp up the bacon a little bit. You just want to wait until the bacon grease melts a little bit, and a little bit of the fat comes out and gets a little bit crispier. And since we shaved the Brussels sprouts, they're not going to take as long to cook. So now you want to just add your Brussels sprouts to your pan. And you just want to stir them around. And at this point, this is only going to take four <clears throat> to five minutes. What we're going to do is you're going to add a little pinch of salt and pepper. Not too much salt because the bacon has salt in it. And we're also going to add a little tiny, tiny pinch of sugar. It helped bring out the sweetness from the Brussels sprouts. And 
And if you notice, if the Brussels sprouts are getting a little bit too brown, you can turn the heat down a little bit, or you can add a little touch of water. But these are they're doing just fine. So I'm gonna stir them up. And the great part about this is while your chicken's cooking, you can start this, we're gonna cover it with a lid and let it sit off the side, off the heat. So when you're ready to plate, all you have to do is just heat them through. Now they're almost, almost cooked all the way through, which is great about shaving them. This way, they don't take a half an hour, 45 minutes in the oven. You're almost ready to go. So now, these look pretty good. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm just gonna put it off to the side and I'm just gonna put a lid on there to keep them warm. And also this will help to cook them a little bit more as the lid is on there. There's still heat in here, which will help cook the Brussels sprouts even a little more. Now we're gonna start with the risotto. You wanna get a high side of pan. You wanna turn it to medium heat. And we're just gonna add a little dab of butter. If you don't want to use butter, you can use a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of canola oil, a little bit of vegetable oil. We just want to melt the butter a little bit. Because then we're going to saute the butternut squash. <clears throat> so you want to get a little bit of color in the butternut squash, a little bit of caramelization going on it. Get the butter melted. Now we're going to add the diced up squash. Now we're going to let that cook. And I'm going to add a little pinch of salt right now. This will help <clears throat> to get a little bit of the moisture out of the squash. You don't want to cook it all the way through because you're going to add the par-cooked risotto and it's going to still cook as it's in the risotto finishing process. You just want to get that. Now what I do is I'm just going to put a lid on it for a second. Just want to help the heat inside just to cook the squash a little bit and get a little bit of color. Always make sure you have a towel. You don't want to pick up a, a lid. Right, cook that. Oops. That happens all the time. It falls on the floor. The dog will get it or the cat will get it. Just watch walking. All right. Cook that a little bit. Let it go. And then also at this point, I'm going to add a little pinch of sugar. That'll help to caramelize a little bit in the pan. You just wanna stir that. And now you're gonna add your par-cooked risotto. You wanna break it up a little bit. Stir it around and get all the little risotto kernels coated in the oil, the butter. And now we're going to add, this is the chicken stock. We're going to add half the chicken stock now. You don't want to add it all at once because what happens, you don't want it to be too watery. So we're going to add that. And we're going to stir it. Since we pre-cooked the risotto, it's gonna take less time to cook as a tra traditional risotto. So I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit to medium. And now we're gonna add, there's two heavy creams included. We're just gonna add one right now. And we're just gonna stir. Now at this point, you're gonna stir like you did a risotto. You're gonna kinda let the starch come out of the rice and just keep on stirring a little bit. You want it to absorb all the moisture from the cream and a stock that's here, then we're gonna add more 
after it's all absorbed into the rice. And I'm going to add a little pinch of pepper at this time. I want to turn the heat up a little bit since the cream was cold. It kind of made the pan a little cold, so I want to heat it, turn it up a little bit so it cooks a little bit faster. And you can see a lot of the moisture has been sucked up by the risotto. So now I'm going to add the second heavy cream. And I'm just going to add about half of the chicken stock that's left. And then at this point, it's probably going to take another six minutes, maybe seven minutes to finish to make the rice nice and tender. You want it tender, but you don't want it mushy. So that's cooking. I'm just going to take a quick look at the chicken here in the oven. You know, it's getting nice. It's starting to cook up a little bit. You, the filling inside is starting to firm up. So when you cut into it, it won't squish out. All right, I'm going to put you back in the oven. And now back to the risotto. And this is a great thing. These two components, you can have done ahead of time. You can sear the chicken, leave it go, put it in a pan, and bake it when you want an hour later, two hours later, it's fine. This, you can start it at this point, turn the heat off, put a lid on it, and then finish it a little bit later. So this is a great meal where you can make it ahead of time and eat it a little bit later. You're not rushing, rushing, rushing. So that's cooking good. And I just know it's going to be a little more salt and pepper. But you can adjust it to taste. If you're on a low sodium, you can leave the salt out. If you like it spicier, you can put a little bit of chili flakes in here. And you can see how the risotto is starting to get nice and thick from the reduction of the cream and the rice is soaking up a lot of the chicken stock. So now, as you can see, it's a little runny, but it's not dry. So I'm going to do is, I'm going to give a little, a little taste. Let's go for part cooking the rice. Now it's almost ready to go. You know, it needs a little, a little pinch of salt. And at this point, <clears throat> you can see there's still a little bit of moisture, which is great. That's what you want, a little bit. You don't want too much. It will be runny, but you don't want it to be dry. You want to kind of have it right in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat off right now, and then and then to finish the dish, we're going to add a little bit of fresh minced herbs. A little dab of butter. Stir that in there, and now the heat is off. So, but it, even though the heat's off, it's still cooking a little bit. And if you see it starts to get a little bit dry, you can add a little bit more of the stock. And we happen to run out of the stock, you can add a little bit of water. And now, see it's starting to dry up a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the chicken stock. Now what I do is I'm going to put a lid on this. 
it's off the heat. I'm gonna put a lid on it and let it sit and we'll wait until the chicken's done. Chef Mark, thank you so much. That really does look delicious and if I had a kitchen in my bunker, I uh, would have been cooking right along with you. I want to tell you a little bit about the Culinary Arts Program at El Tri C. Uh, the Culinary Arts Program prepares students for jobs in the restaurant uh, field, uh, positions such as restaurant manager, sous chef, uh, prep cook, line cook, you name it, you can do it through the Culinary Arts Program. Uh, there's a focus on farm to table cooking and uh, local sourcing with their ingredients, so I, I encourage you to uh, read more into the culinary arts uh, degree at uh, El Tri-C. All right, now before you're ready to finish the risotto, which we had it off the heat, it's ready to go. We're gonna get an Asian pear. This is from one of our other local farmers, Suburashi Kuimoto, uh, out of Coopersburg. So we're just gonna get the Asian pear. Just gonna dice it. We wanna add it at the end, so it keeps a nice crispness to it. So we're just gonna get it. You can take the skin off if you like. I prefer to leave it on. Just wanna do a nice little Dice of the pear. And then we're just going to add this to the risotto. And then you're going to want to stir that in at the last minute because you want to keep the nice freshness of the Asian pear. Now it's looking really nice. It's, if it seems to get dry a little bit, this looks good. You can add a little more water or if you have any stock left, you can add a little stock to that. What I'm just going to do is just going to put the lid on this and now we're going to check the chickens. So you get a nice little golden brown on them. To touch, for me, they feel like they're done, but I'm just gonna get a little thermometer just to make sure. You wanna make sure you put it in the thickest part of the chicken. I said we want to go to about 155. I know they say 165, but as a chicken rest, it will continue to cook. So, yeah, we're about 1 150 now, which is good. So as a chicken sits here, as it rests, it's going to cook a little bit. Now we're going to heat up. So this you want to chicken. You can leave it off to the side. You can put a little lid on it or a piece of foil just to keep it while you're heating up the sauce. This is the gastrique, which is the sweet and sour sauce. It's already done, it's so just gonna put it in a pan. We're just gonna heat it up a little bit. It seems like a little bit th thick now, but as it heats up, it will loosen up. And you just wanna get that a little bit. You don't wanna get it too, too hot, so you don't wanna caramelize uh, the sugar that is in there anymore. All right. Now I think I'm ready to plate. Let me just grab a plate. Here, get your risotto. I'm gonna make a nice little pile of risotto. Your Brussels sprouts, they have the bacon in them. And then your 
sauce here, which is warming up nicely. You don't want to get it too, too hot. You don't want to be very hot. You just want to like lukewarm because it's nice, a nice and thick consistency. And we're going to turn the heat off of there. Gonna get your chicken breast. And then with the gastrique, you don't want to put it all over the chicken breast. You don't want to lose that nice skin that you obtained. So just gonna do a little drizzle around. And if you have a little bit of herbs left over from the risotto, you can just sprinkle a little bit on top. There is your virtual dinner. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And thank you very much for participating. I'd like to uh, take a moment to thank all of the people who uh, worked so hard to make this uh, evening happen. Uh, with special thanks to Sylvia Vargas, who's the executive director of the LTRIC Foundation, and Jane Wolchak, who is the uh, events manager and uh, alumni relations, for putting this together. Uh, thank you so much. Have a good night and stay healthy. Take care.